What's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Average Aaron's Auto Videos and today we are working on a 2005 Ford Freestyle. I believe it's the limited edition here. Uh, so the interior is super nice as you guys can see that. Uh, anyway, that's not why we're here. Uh, we're going to be removing uh, one of the link connector sway bars and I'm sorry, stabilizer bar link uh, for this car. And so the tools you'll need is just your lug wrench to remove the tire, which many of you already know how to do. And then it's essentially just two bolts. All right, so you've got one up here and I already have the tools on it so you guys can see exactly what you need. You need a 15 millimeter wrench and I've got a ratcheting one in here which helps. And then because the interior of this uh, component spins, you'll have to have something to hold it here while you remove the nut. And so for that, I've got a, I think it's a quarter inch drive, uh, seven millimeter socket head to hold on the end while I then remove, uh, you utilize the wrench here to take off the bolt that you see there. So there's one up here and there's also one uh, right down here where it connects. And so I've got the part number for the box here uh, for this piece and it even says front right on it right there. Um, now I've got a couple boxes, I'm replacing both of them. The other Duralast box that the other side comes in like looks different, uh, but it is okay. The parts will line up and the parts will match as I'll so show you uh, once I get the old one off. But what you're looking for too is to make sure that you have your opposing heads and then you'll have the same size nuts to go back on there. You may have a different nut on here, like a self-locking nut, and it may be a different size. That is okay, that's what it was on the rears, but on the front, they're gonna be the exact same. Now before I got started, I also used some penetrating oil. Uh, I used this bad boy right here, just sprayed it on there so that these bolts will be good and loose and easy to take off uh, as I'm removing the parts. So what I'm gonna do is just take a quick pause. I'm gonna remove these and then I'll lay the components side by side so you guys can see that they are the same part and then we'll run through the reverse step process of putting it back on. All right, now remember when I said you had to have that seven millimeter on the end because the part would rotate? Yeah. So I wanna show you guys what that looks like in the video. So as I'm spinning this, the head of, oops, the head of that is spinning. So you have to have the seven millimeter on the end of that to kind of hold it in place as you're taking it off. Uh, the top one actually didn't need it uh, after a couple threads, but this one definitely does. All right, so I've got the bolts off. I've got the nuts off, the bolts. And uh, <clears throat> it's pretty tight, but it moves a little bit. But that's why you can use your uh, extractor tool here or the hammer and hit it out. All right, so that's not coming out too easy. So what I'm going to need to do is play with some of the connections here. I may have to uh, get something in here to lift this, but I'll do that. And I may try to tap out the bottom here, but uh, I'll come back so you guys don't have to just watch me hammering away on this. Okay. And then I'll show you uh, how we did it. And that little, my uh, helper will help me, won't you, little EO? Yeah. All right, hit pause. All right, so after much finagling, we were able to get it. And what I did was, if your camera will look down just a little bit, I put a second, uh, look down, I put a second jack stand right here and lifted up on this because right up here, it felt like there was too much tension. So even though it lifted at all, I was able to change the angle and I also was able to pry, uh, I used a flathead screwdriver to get in here and to pry it out just a little bit. And I just hammered here, hammered here, hammered here, hammered wow. here. Wow. That's a lot of hammering, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And so after doing that, uh, just breaking it loose over time, uh, I was able to finally get it out. Yay. And uh, Oh, that's a great encouraging noise, Eden. Thank you. So it comes out. Wiggle. Wiggle. There we go. See, it just took a little bit, it took a little bit, and we got it out. Now, Yay. if you compare it to this part, it looks... That one looks way newer. It better. It's in a new bag. <laughs> and we're going to put this part on. So let me get it out of the bag, and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we got the parts. Looks good. Now, this came with a plastic protective sleeve over it, uh, which I took off to get on here. So just make sure as you put it in there and you're adjusting things in and out, try to protect the threads as best you can so you don't mess up any of the grooves uh, so the nut can go on just fine. If that would be bad, then you'd have to get another one. Exactly, and I don't want to do that. Uh, one thing I did do is I pulled the brake line out of the way as I was hammering so I wouldn't risk breaking the brake line. It just has a little piece you can put back in the but little But it should probably be called the unbrake line. <laughs> you silly. Since you don't want to break it. Exactly. Right? But it does break the vehicle. So I see where you're coming from. Alright. So let me load in the top here. 
and then I'll get the bottom started, and you'll have to play with the heads. Play with heads? Are you going to catch with the heads? Nope. Okay. And you'll have to bend this metal bar down a little bit to feed it in there. All right. All right, now I'm just gonna push it through and I'll have to play with this off camera in a minute to get this to it, but I recommend having somebody else here to help move this heavy metal beam down and uh, then you'll be able to feed that through so you don't damage the threads. All right, so instead of wrestling this on, I just lift it up um, right here on it and I was able to get this bottom piece in a lot more. So I'm gonna tighten the bolts on. All right. So we got the bolts tightened down. We used the seven millimeter ratchet head to hold this while we tighten the bolt. Uh, don't get your tool stuck. Exactly, don't get the tool stuck. And then just remember if you did remove the brake line that you wanna put it back in those little holding channels that they've got. Okay. And then also I will say these bolts seem kinda of cheap. Uh, already on the edges, this one is frayed a little bit and the bottom one, it ended up stripping off a couple of the corners and I had to use um, one of these bad boys to uh, tighten it down like the last little bit, but it's on there, it's solid and good, but getting it off again in 80,000 miles or 100,000 miles might be a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so just watch the metal. I didn't realize my tools were stronger than that. I, maybe just cheap metal, I don't know. But anyway, it's on there, it's good. Uh, so we'll put the tire back on and it will be good to go. And I, I will Yay. notice, yeah, and we can roll. Um, after I tightened it, I did release the jack stand. You'll notice right down here, there is no jack stand that was lifting up the suspension component. Um. And uh, so I'm going to do one more tighten on the top just to make sure it's good. But hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If so, hit that like and subscribe button oh, down yeah. below. <laughs> Thanks, little Leo. And uh, if you guys got any more questions, feel free to post it in the comments. And we will see you guys next time.